Hello fellow paranormalers and welcome to this uh, vlog or more of a discussion really about psychology and paranormal behavioural subjects um, as well as EVPs and such like. So it's a general, going to be a general discussion. Um, it might be a little bit long-winded as well. Uh, today is the 15th of December 2014. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a little while because I get a number of questions actually in private messages from people because people tend to know that I'm a psychologist as, as, well, as, as well as a paranormalist. And for me, those two things have gone hand in hand for the best part of 35 plus years. I've been, um, if anyone doesn't really know, uh, I've been recording EVPs on reel to reel tape and such like a little hand voice recorders that were that were on tape and such like for decades, decades ago. <laughs> um, so and I and I there's another aspect to me which I'm not very public that's not very public knowledge about spirits and uh, demons and such like um, there's there's a whole history I'm not going to go into that right now but it, it's all linked together and hopefully by the end of this uh, video I'm I just would love to raise some questions if we can get answers to them fantastic in 30 odd years I still haven't had answers to things that I wish I had answers to and I notice even now with all the technology that we've got with all of the new things that are coming out on the market with all the research that has been done we are as paranormalists and psychologists still asking questions about certain things and I think it's just human nature that we want to get answers to things, you know, um, and I will, you know, this will keep coming out. Now, we may come up with some answers today. I hope maybe I can come up with some answers for some people. Maybe I can come up with some thought provoking questions, um, which will, you know, I really welcome some debate, some interaction with other paranormalers out there. Um, I have tried this invitation for quite a number of years and I don't know why, but everyone, ev all the paranormalers that, normalers that I actually know, um, they just keep within their own little closed group. It's, it's unfortunate really that this information is not being shared a bit more widely. Thanks to YouTube, we're kind of getting to a point and I've I, only recently myself I have started to publish if you like you know experiments and sessions and and, and such like that I'm that I'm doing I'm kind of new to the if you like the digital age technology of recording EVPs and sessions and such like everything really for me up until maybe a few years ago was all done on tape it was very analog it was handwritten down you know, it, it was very personal and um, it was very personal to other people. So it wasn't necessarily something that you'd want to make public. Now, of course, we've got things like YouTube. We've got several TV programs now that people are watching. They're talking about it. People are interested. If you like, the general public are becoming very interested. It's becoming almost acceptable that you know there 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 is some form of spirit world that we don't necessarily know or when i say we i mean the general populace i know that it's there and i've grown up with it um from a very early age so it's it's not a new thing to me uh but to some people you know <clears throat> whether it's through their just their own belief system or whether it's through their religious beliefs or whatever for whatever reason people have chosen not to really open their eyes and become aware of the spirit realm or the the ethereal you know levels or whatever people like to label these things as people are becoming more aware that there is actually things happening there are things that we cannot see that are happening um, around us um, and I think people are becoming more inquisitive to what is actually going on so it, it is 
if you like becoming a bit more popular um you can t i find that i can actually talk about the spirit world and i can talk about ghosts and hauntings and possessions and all of these other sort of um esoteric type subjects that were abs absolutely taboo up until fairly you know in the last few decades people are becoming more open to these things now which is good i think it's good unfortunately what comes along with that is a huge amount of skepticism and a huge amount of misbelief and misinformation about you know the spirit world and about talking to ghosts and all of all of this kind of paranormal type thing so i find it all rather interesting as a psychologist and also as a paranormal that you know there is this kind of two-sided thing going on with with the world at the moment um you know you've got people who absolutely disbelieve at one end and you've got people like myself who absolutely believe the other and then you've got a mishmash of people who in the middle that either believe or they don't believe or they're you know they like to believe they like to watch the tv programs they like to be inquisitive about it but they still keep it at arm's length you know um so you're always going to have that you're going to have people that that don't want to talk about it at all even though they've had experiences themselves i don't i'm sure everyone's who who's into the paranormal has had this you know, people are aware things have happened poltergeist activity you know strange things have happened noises voices whatever it might be um wherever they are not always necessarily at home um but they still choose to close their mind to what that is or what it could be or that it even exists so all rather interesting anyway i'm kind of waffling on a bit but i'm just trying to lay the foundation for t today's discussion really so that people can understand where i come from that you know i'm not just uh, sort of a you know been doing this for a couple of years and um, hey presto, I know it all. Um, I don't know it all. And I, I always shy away from people who claim that they do and try to give the impression that they are, you know, that they know it all and that they've been there, done that, and they know how to deal with it. Um, I've seen some just terrible things that people have been doing or attempting to do in the name of paranormal who get into trouble. Um, like anything in life, really, sometimes you see people in your lifetime, uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has th that's come across this, where you really f you can really see the path that someone's going down. Okay, um, you you really want to help them. You, you know, you can see that they're on this road of destruction, if you like, or self-harm or, you know, whatever it is, whatever it might be. And it doesn't seem to matter how much you try to inform them, try to advise them. They're just going to ignore what you say. They just don't want to listen. They don't see... The path that they're going down and what 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 the potential dangers or whatever that's go, that's going down this is not i'm not only relating this to people in in the psychology you know psychology work that i do but also in the paranormal as well i've seen people doing things on the paranormal side of the you know on the paranormal side like invoking ghost you know spirits and demons and you know doing all of these things uh, people are not taking precautions they have no experience about what these things can do and i've seen people you know doing some pretty daft things anyway really really quite dangerous things not realizing but it's a bit like smoking you know people think it's good they smoke when they're young. Oh, that's OK. I can give up at any time. I know what I'm doing, blah, 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 blah. And then they don't realise by the time they're 30, they're highly addicted. And they're actually in all of that time that they've been smoking, they've been damaging their body, irreparably damaging their body. Same in the paranormal. You're opening portals to things. Sometimes I find that people are opening portals to things and dealing with demons and 
negative entities, etc., etc., that are actually really, really damaging. And although at the time it might seem like they're in control and that they know they know what they're doing, they actually don't know what they're doing. They're not in control. They're not protecting themselves. And in a way, I've I've also seen a lack of respect for these entities. It's like it's like they're being aggressive to something that they they can't even see. They they have no they don't know where it's coming from. Anyway, I'm waffling a little bit, but anyway, they're 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 the kind of things that I you know I like to talk about, and I'm hoping that that you know people who view this video and any of my other videos, I've done a whole series of video videos where I'm just asking questions. I'm inviting people to actually comment and you know join in a dis in a discussion. I don't know I don't know it all. I, I'm not a person that likes to think I know it all. I know a little. I know I know enough about psychology to help people out, and I know enough about the paranormal. And so what? I've been doing it for thirty odd years. Um, my first involvement with the paranormal, I was probably about six or seven years old, um, through my grandmother. So you know, and I I wasn't scared by any of this stuff. I just ex accepted that that's actually you know what 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 actually people did. And when people, when I then saw, you know, um, people's reaction when I used to talk about things to do with anything to do with paranormal or spirit world or, you know, Tara cards or anything along those, fortune telling, and it doesn't matter, any psychic abilities, anything at all, you know, people, people just like really kind of balked at the idea that, that somebody could actually even talk about all that. Um, but hey, you know. I believe that we 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 live a life on this planet, and um, at the end of the day, you know, you've got to pass on your experiences, and there's ways of passing on those experiences. There's ways of opening up channels of communication with other people so that other people can learn, and there are people around that choose to keep everything to themselves they, they they don't want to share it it's something that they know and they they want to use it in their way they don't want to share it with anyone else and that's not me and that's not a lot of people that I actually follow on on um, on YouTube and various websites to do with the paranormal it's the same in the psychology world I've come across exactly the same thing you know there are people who who have snippets of information about you know, the psychological way that our brains work and behavioural, you know, systems and stuff, stuff like this. And um, they want to keep it to themselves. They don't they don't see the benefit of actually sharing that knowledge and other people, other people, other psychologists actually benefiting from it and then passing that information on or using their techniques and passing that on. So it's it's everywhere unfortunately but i'm just saying that that's not me i'm one of these people i share everything even in my own profession i like to share everything you know people are always amazed at what i what i what i will give people in the knowledge that i will share people the techniques that i use etc it's 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 not new it's not new it's just that i've been given a, a, a long time to practice it and to to get it right if you like or or to get it right to a point where i can help people so anyway as you notice i tend to waffle a little bit um getting back to the subject as a bit of history um getting back to the subject in hand psychology and the paranormal um, I know that a lot of paranormalists don't study or have ever studied psycho psychology and so I think it's a little bit of a disadvantage for, from their point of view not knowing about um, the, the behavioural psychology of people. Now the subject that I wanted to actually talk about specifically and this always makes me smile when I do my own sessions, my own private sessions, or I'm doing a session to help someone else. Um, if I was to walk into a room full of people that I had never met before, okay, let's just say there were 20, you know, 20 people in that room and I've never met them before in my life, okay? Now, unknown to me, there could be 
all sorts of people in there from, you know, somebody who maybe lives on the street, you know, to a professor or in a university, or they could be a doctor in there. They could be, you know, a housewife. They could be a murderer. They could be, you know, all these various different people. I think a lot of the time you have to approach um, EVP sessions, for instance, or any kind of session that you do with the same attitude of, I don't know these people. They could be anyone. These people each have their own life. They each have their own agenda. They have their own behavioral issues, maybe. Or, you know, they have different attitudes towards love, towards sex, towards violence, towards helping people, compassion, all of those qualities that we as humans actually have, and that's what makes us unique. I approach EVP sessions and any form of paranormal sessions with the same attitude that I would go into with a room full of people that I've never met before. And I think that that's actually quite key. I think personally, I see so many people going into paranormal sessions um, and doing investigations, et cetera, et cetera. And then they start jumping up and down and wondering why they get obscene words, why they get violent communication from, from someone in, the, in that you know, room. I mean, if I was to go into a room and start talking to people like I knew them, or I demanded to have information from them, I, th I think, you know, because of people's psychology, each person is different, you're going to get a different response. The response you get from someone on the human level is going to be measured against my my um, questions, my inquisitiveness to ask. I could ask something from somebody, maybe in a slightly aggressive way, to one person, but then somebody else in that group might respond to me quite violently by asking exactly the same question in the same way. Somebody else in that group might respond and can say absolutely nothing. They might just sit there and stare at me as if, you know, I'm a complete alien. Um, because their psychology and reaction to what I've just said has an effect on their own behavioural attitude. We can't go into things like the spirit world. Let's just keep it simple, OK? So we're doing a session, you know, and we believe that we're talking to spirits and people who have passed on. I, I quite often see people saying how many people are in the room, how many people are present, you know, how many ghosts are here. And you, you get a whole range of different, you know, answers is typically, I mean, I've, ne I've never had one. <laughs> There's always been half a dozen to a dozen to, I've had 20, sometimes I've had 30. I know that some people have said, especially when they go and do sessions in a grave graveyard somewhere, or you know, that they get 200. So you're going to get those same responses. Why do I believe this? Because too many other psychologists and paranormalists that I've, I know and have, have listened to their lectures, etc., have said very much the same thing. As humans, we build up over time a personality. I'm not going to touch things like reincarnation, etc. But I'm just, let's just assume that somebody has lived a life once and they've lived a full life. So let's say 50, 60, 70, 80 years, however long. During that time, they have modelled their own map of the world. They've modelled their own psychology in as much as their behavioural psychology, their reactions to things, what is good to them, what is bad to them, what their core values are. During that time, you know, that's being indoctrinated, if you like, into their brain. And if they're not the kind of person that has an open mind, let's say, to other ideas and, you know, other 
other psychology, if you like. They don't want to change what's going on in their head because they're happy with it. It, it makes their life happy, makes them happy. They go throughout their whole life with that. It's been discussed in great detail about how spirits and ghosts and such like will carry that personality, those behavioural traits with them when they die, when they pass on. So somebody who was particularly violent and aggressive and nasty and very negative throughout their life will carry that over into their next, the, the next level of their existence or con consciousness or subconsciousness, whatever you want to call it. Um, excuse me while I just I have a cup of tea here and um, I'm getting dry. So somebody who's very meek, very quiet, very silent, gets on with their life, doesn't involve themselves with anyone, they are going to carry that over into the next life. Somebody who's active, who's inquisitive, who asks a lot of questions, who who is maybe a lot more um, outwardly, you know, um, well, no, what's the word? Extrovert than, than maybe most people doesn't mind talking to complete strangers, maybe about personal information about themselves or someone else. Um, you know, you've got people who enjoy gossip, you know, uh, there are, there's a whole wide range. I mean, if you sat down and actually just observed a room full of people that you knew, that you know very well, maybe family members or maybe work colleagues or something like that, and you observed and just took in how they spoke, how they, how they themselves observe other people, um, how they react to certain different emotions that other, other people interact with them, um, you would then, I believe, from a psychological point of view, begin to understand how to deal with spirits because you're dealing with very much the same thing. You just can't physically see them. You can't look into their eyes. You can't observe their body language. We can sometimes, um, I get feedback on their voice tone, for instance. I mean, we, you know, there's a, I get enough EVPs through throughout a five, five minute, 10 minute session. I get a huge amount of EVPs, typically, uh, you know, anywhere between a five and a 10 minute session for me, and I will get 50 plus consistently 50 plus EVPs come through. It's like there's a whole world of chatter going on. They're all different people. And they, they, some of the spirits that are around will keep continuing to communicate throughout the whole session. And some will say a couple of words and then just disappear. And when you, when you actually ask how many spirits are present and they say, 10 you may only get evps from three or four of those people because the other people will just observe you know they're just there they just want they maybe they're inquisitive about what's going on just as in our own physical life sometimes it can take people a long time to feel confident enough to say something if we go back to that analogy of the group of people that I go into that I've never met these people before. But if I knew that I was going to meet them on every week, once a week, every week, the same amount of people, I invited the same people to come. What do you think would happen? Over time, people will begin to trust you or me in that group. And somebody who's maybe very, very timid and feels intimidated by being asked questions, maybe, will feel a little bit more relaxed and may respond to being asked a question. And I think this is why it takes a long time for things like spirit guides. I know I've got spirit guides. I know I've got at least two spirit guides that I know of. Um, they won't talk to me. <laughs> I've, I've tried for decades to get them to talk to me. They, they, they won't communicate with me for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, but I know that they're there and I know that they guide me and I know, they, I know how they communicate with me. So 
you know, communicate as in not physically talking or, you know, sort of whispering in my ear or coming out on EVPs, etc. But they're communicating with me in their way to guide me through life. So for whatever reason, they don't want to talk. And I know that some paranormalists will have, if you like, a conversation with their spirit guide. Um, which is amazing, I think is absolutely amazing because I've tried and I haven't, I haven't been really successful at all. Um, so yeah, Th this is, this is really, I hope just a very small subject that people, uh, can comment on. Please do comment below if you have any questions, I, you know, anything at all or comments to make about it. I've probably actually overgeneralized this subject, but I think it, it may just open up the eyes of, of some people. I know that some of the people that follow me and some of the people that I follow on YouTube, um, you know, I know that they, they have studied psychology and they do understand, if you like, the psychology, the, the, the link between psychology and the paranormal. Pretty much psychology and anything else you do in your life is linked. But, you know, we're talking about paranormal stuff here. Um, so people will realise that, you know, there is a level of psychology and, and even if you're not a psychologist as per se or have ever studied psychology, you will, as a human being, have all of that knowledge up here anyway. You've got all the knowledge of psychology in your in your head and you're doing it every day. Everybody does it every single day. They just don't realise they're doing it. Um, you know, the, you, you know you, people do know when you're talking to somebody that's maybe quite aggressive or something, you get a feeling from them, you observe something about their their manner, their the way that they're talking, their speech, the behaviour. Your brain is processing all that information anyway and sending signals to your brain about, you know, whoa, like if it's somebody that's possibly a bit dangerous, your brain will be saying, don't get involved, don't get involved, you know. Whether you choose to listen to those messages or not is really down to each individual. Um, as a psychologist, you learn to open up those channels and listen to those messages that are coming from parts of your brain, through, from your subconscious, and you can interpret them and then, you know, speak them out. And that's part of the job, if you like, of a psychologist is to help other people do the same. It's not about solving people's problems. It's not about altering people's behavior for them. It's about them themselves realizing that they can do that for themselves, that they have the ability to change their own behavioral patterns, to break cycles that keep getting them into trouble and, and such like. And the same goes for, you know, linking the two together with the paranormal. Um, I just hope that this has been useful subject of some sort and that um, people will find it useful. I hope that's all I that's all I really hope for. Um, I'm not looking for huge amounts of sub subscribers or likes or anything along those lines. They're quite minor and trivial, really. But I, what I do as as a psychologist and as a f sort of a fellow paranormal, I'm just hoping that you know, at some point there will be some really good juicy discussion about the, the you know, paranormal and our experiences and with a, maybe a, an aspect on the psychology would be absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you again in another video.